Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Talk. I'm Juliette Beauchamp and I am here with John Gold, who is a senior writer at Network World, and we are going to be talking all things retail IoT. So stay tuned. So, John, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. So we're going to be discussing a bit about retail IoT. And when I heard retail IoT, I didn't think about how you frame it. I think more about smart home devices, things that you can go to any store. You can go on Amazon and you can buy an IoT device from a retailer. But that's not exactly how you're framing retail IoT. No, I think... um you know, at least in this context, definitely, as you said, you know, consumer uh, consumer type IoT is definitely what you know people think of when you talk about IoT these days. You know, whether it's like, you know, a remote door lock for your house, or you know, something that you know you can um, where you can play with you know your climate control from your phone. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I would say the retail sector is using it um, in a lot of less visible ways right now, and I think they will get more visible in the future. Yeah, it's really interesting how much IoT is a part of our everyday lives in ways that we may not even realize. As simple as when you order something from Amazon, you obviously know that a a single person isn't going and picking. I'm trying to think of what I recently ordered from Amazon. I recently ordered some lights. Mm -hmm. So when I ordered my lights, I pressed, you know, place order. I knew that some random person wasn't going to the shelves and picking out this specific box of lights and made sure that they were the yellow gold ones because I hate (laughs) white gold LED lights. They are not pretty, in my opinion. So (laughs) I know that there wasn't a physical person going and taking that, but it's there's so many layers to the devices that a big retailer like um, Amazon uses and how they incorporate IoT. It's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when you click that, like you were talking about, when you click that order button, you know, you're going through just, you know, an army of servers and robots and warehouse technology. And yeah, um, which is why I was saying earlier that, you know, a lot of what, a lot of the IoT technology that goes into retail is, you know, firmly on the back end. It's, you know, in, uh, you know, these clever roboticized, you know, warehouses that, you know, um, or, you know, run hyper efficiently on, um, and to be clear, I don't fully understand, you know, how those work. And I don't think so Amazon, you don't, work for, you don't work for Amazon. I do not work for Amazon. And uh, I don't think they'll tell me uh, the secrets of their, their secret sauce. So, but we know that there's a lot of these IOT incorporated devices that these re- retailers are using. What are some examples, th- like, for example, that Amazon, what are some examples of devices that Amazon is using? Oh, um, well, what they're uh, trialing right now and what I've actually written about fairly recently is um, the Amazon Go store concept. Yeah, so it's a grocery store with no cashiers. The The idea is that you scan in with your phone, like the, you have your own little unique uh, ID on it and when you enter, and a really complicated system of cameras and um, what a couple experts I talk to think are like weight sensors on shelves, um, just Automatically measuring what you, um, you know, putting in your basket, what you've bought, and you know, it just adds up your bill. You just go in, take stuff, walk out, and you know, something pops up on your phone that says, "Hey, you've just paid Amazon sixteen dollars for whatever." Um, Some granola bars. Granola bars. Yes. Yeah. That's it's really cool and feels really futuristic. It does. It's probably not great news if you're, you know, if you actually work in retail, but uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty impressive piece of technology. What's interesting, too, is that since this feels so futuristic and foreign, I wonder if there's going to be any sort of backlash for this to be becoming widespread. Um, I could certainly see it. Like I say, you know, not just from, you know, the people who used to have jobs in that sort of industry now, you know, are getting replaced by robots and so forth. But, um, yeah, and I guess there is probably something to the idea that it's, you know, an odd experience, You're just, mm-hmm. you know, going in and taking stuff and, you know, the sensation of a large machine watching you and (laughs) deciding what you owe it. Yeah, it almost, there's, seems to be a lack of anonymity. Like, there's just everything that you're doing, everything that you're buying, every movement in in the store is tracked. And that's a little, I don't know, to me, that's a kind of a little creepy. And I would think that for other consumers it is, too. I couldn't agree more, actually. Um, And that's definitely something they'll probably have to overcome if they can, you know, if they want to get, you know, broad acceptance here. And, yeah, I mean, the whole thing about not being anonymous, that's, you know, that's part and parcel of this. That's how that whole, you know, type of technology is, you know, meant to work. Um, You really won't love the other uh, type of retail (laughs) IoT technology that people seem to be um, really interested in these days, which is um, location-based advertising. Oh, okay. What is it? Tell us about it. (laughs) Oh, it's great. Uh, It's... um, 
I the tech the specific technology behind it will vary, but it's usually something like um, like a Bluetooth low energy kind of like beacon that's you know unobtrusively placed somewhere that will interact probably with your phone or a wearable device and say, hey Juliet, there's you know a sale on I don't know granola bars down this uh, down this aisle. So you know yes. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, another way for them to put more advertising in front of us. It's a uh, yeah brave yeah, new world, huh? <laughs> that's something else because I mean there's already obviously targeted advertising that's not exactly new sure. and even somewhat location based advertising based just based on your IP address like if I'm here I get you know if I type in I want I need a haircut mm-hmm. I type in salons you know into Google and they're going to show me salons that are around me if I go home they're going to show me salons that are near my home if I go to mm-hmm. Los Angeles they're going to show me salons in Los Angeles and similar advertising so that is something that at this point I'm comfortable with and I think most consumers are it's just if you want to get a haircut, you're going to have to, you know, learn to deal with that. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's. Oh, I don't really like that vegan technology. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there. It's it definitely does feel different, you know. To you know, on the one hand, them understanding where your your IP address, you know, is. Yeah, of course. At a fairly gross, you know, not very granular level mm-hmm. is kind of okay. You know, when you get those funny ads that say something like, "Oh, hey, Somerville resident" or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a bit different when it's you know the phone that's right there on your person. Um, yeah, and, and you're in aisle three, and the granola bars are in aisle five. Yes, it's um, <laughs> I yeah, that's a little off-putting. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This is something the 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 sort of IoT technology is coming into its own and has sort of did sort of grow towards the tail end of last year, and as you predict, is going to sort of become more widespread in 2019. What are your thoughts about it? Um. I think it'll still be a, you know, a fairly slow evolution. Mm-hmm. 2019, I think you're going to start seeing things like, you know, I mean, Amazon's already got like the Go Store uh, up and running in a few locations. Um, I think mostly in Seattle, um, yeah. and you know, so you'll start seeing, you know, more more pilot programs, more you know, trial runs. Um, I I don't think 2019 will see a lot of, you know, just really widespread uptake, you know, it's not going to, you know, these technologies aren't going to become ubiquitous overnight or anything like that. But, you know, within the next two, three years, maybe they could become a lot more common. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I kind of want to go to one of those Amazon Go stores and just (laughs) sort of see what it's like and like, look at, I don't know if any of our viewers have been to an Amazon Go store, I want to hear about it. Let us know because that seems so creepy to me. (laughs) So, did you like? Do, do you feel the cameras watching you? I don't know. <laughs> so I will say, in fairness, they the the in the uh, the video the little you know proof of concept video that Amazon has, they do make the food look pretty good. So that so maybe it's have. worth it. Possibly, yeah. No, you give and you take. <laughs> so, what? So is this sort of beacon technology that you're talking about before the like low, the Bluetooth mm-hmm. uh, granola bars and aisle five? Is that? Has that really been rolled out? I'm sorry if you already mentioned that. Oh no, um, I don't think it's. I think it. You know, it's the same kind of thing. I think that probably you know some companies have a few stores where they're trying it out, but I, mm-hmm. it's um, it's certainly not widespread yet. No, um, and I don't think you know. And for the reasons we outlined, I don't think it's going to be you know something that people are going to you know these businesses are going to rush to get out there um, just because you know people are going to obviously get annoyed at that. I think, but um, again. You know, 2019, you'll probably see a few more of them, 2020, 2021. Um, if it turns out this is a concept that, you know, is going to work and it doesn't, you know, drive people too crazy, then, then that's when you'll probably see um, see them a little bit more widespread. And what sort of um, IoT devices are traditional retailer, traditional, you know, brick and mortar retailers using right now, if any? Is there really anything that affects the consumer? Um, I would... I wouldn't say so. Like I say, most of you know the you know big commonplace um, IoT texts that are being used are kind of you know uh, are you have to do more with the supply chain and all that sort of thing. Um, but you know, device the probably there are you know um, improved device security and uh, you know just um, what's the word I'm looking for inventory. You know, mm-hmm. keeping track of stuff like that. Um, that's you know that's a possibility certainly. But it's yeah, I mean. IoT in sort of the front of the store in a brick and mortar is not, you know, a super common thing, I would say. Yeah, I cuz I mean to me it makes sense for retailers to be using just as any other business would be using IoT oh, sure. devices. And then and you know that's also there's also the point to be made there that, you know, larger 
um, you know, larger, maybe not necessarily like a mom, a little mom and pop store, but like larger retailers will use uh, IoT in the way that you know other large businesses will. You know, mm-hmm. if it's just you know having, you know, building management stuff, security, you know, having the HVAC, uh, you know, hooked up to um, an IoT hub. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, that's just that's a sort of general enterprise IoT. And you briefly mentioned using IoT devices to sort of track inventory. Is that something that retailers use now? Yeah, it's you know it's the same sort of principle as you know just the uh, the little metal guys you'd find in books before you bought them for, you know from the bookstore. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As people used to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, similar kinds of you know just um, you know asset tracking technology, and um, you know I think you're probably just going to see them in. You know, new and different uh, you know types of goods. Um, yeah, and those are things that are helpful to the consumer because if I want to know if Target is in stock of bounty paper towels, I want to be able to see like how many the Target near me has, and if I can go pick it up right then and there. That's nice, and that's convenient to the consumer. So not all IoT technology needs to feel scary. No, absolutely. And that's and that's a great idea actually just being able to yeah, having that kind of visibility into into stocks and so forth. But um yeah. I would really like that as a consumer. <laughs> so, in um your 2019 predictions article John wrote an article for Network World that will also reference and link that you can so you can see it is a really funny sort of something about um Walmart using like uh, biometrics. Oh. Tell, tell me about this. This is <laughs> fascinating. To be, I, to, I'm going to disappoint you slightly because I actually didn't wasn't able to find out a huge amount about this okay, technology that's right. just because it's you know it's a pilot program. It's you know something they're just kind of toying with. But yeah, it's a biometric system. They are toying with a biometric system that you know when you have your hands on the shopping cart will read your vital signs and um, presumably track you through the store. Um, so oh. what were we talking about with uh, these things not being creepy? Yeah, <laughs> I think I can't imagine like pushing a shopping cart and it telling me my heart rate. <laughs> that, see, that never seems to work for me when it's on treadmills at the gym. I, yeah, I, I, don't, never I honestly works. don't get it. It's, it's It seems like, you know, oh, your vital signs are kind of crappy. Maybe me steer you towards, I don't know, some healthier diet choices or something. Oh, that would be so creepy. <laughs> yeah. And also a little high handed, I think. <laughs> Let, let me live my life. <laughs> that would actually be really, really. Oh, that's like that's yeah. really scary. Oh, I don't like that at all. Retailers are just desperate to learn as much as possible about us. You know, shop. You know, shopping online. They have you know all sorts of built-in tools to learn. You know, everything they need to know about your you know your demographic info and so you know real-world retailers are just, you know they want that same kind of advantage and you know IoT tech is one of the ways I think they're going about it. So. Yeah, wow, that'll be really interesting to see what sort of rolls out in 2019. It's, I think that there's obviously not all, I think the message that we do want to send is not all IoT needs to feel creepy and bad, (laughs) but it's, it'll be an interesting sort of debate and I'm sure people will be talking about it if there are these sort of devices that are, that feel like they're invading customers' privacy. Absolutely. Um, like I, you know, I'm sure you can probably tell from you know the tone of the conversation which you know end of the spectrum I fall towards. But yeah, you know, and it's certainly an issue that's worth keeping an eye on as the technology advances, as things become, um, you know, a little bit more widely distributed. Um, yeah, for sure, it's something to keep an eye on. And I think it'll be also interesting to see how customers' privacy rights, um, how how customer privacy rights, especially in the U.S., become more protected as there's more backlash, especially with the EU's GDPR, like that's, they're really settling into protecting citizens' yes. privacy and how, and the difference, I mean, we don't have that in the US, and m- maybe if further laws protecting consumer privacy, if that will affect the sort of data mining by companies, because it, it, you don't realize how frequently big companies are just learning everything about you. Yeah, I mean, you can be aware of it too, you know, and, you know, as people sort of in technology, I suppose we're, you know, arguably better informed about it than, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people are, but sure. yeah, it does sort of, you know, like I was talking about, it sort of underlines the fact that, you know, the, you know, extent to which, you know, these companies can delve into, you know, your personal information and, you know, like I say the fact that, you know, brick and mortar retailers are, you know, so you know, so gung ho for catching up. It's it seems like um, 
yeah, it definitely uh, seems like some kind of legislation, you know, would, might be a good idea in the future just because, yeah, you know, the mark, the reach of uh, marketing um, companies into our, into our data is getting a little scary. And you I mean, mentioned, <laughs> and you mentioned brick and mortar stores sort of trying to play catch up. Do you think that the use of these devices is in response to the huge online marketplace, or do you think it's just it just is just because technology has advanced and they would have done it anyway? Um, I'll split the difference. Honestly, I think it's a combination that you know they're they're probably taking a bath you know next to you know online retailers like Amazon and mm-hmm. also that. You know, it's actually the technology for, you know, very small computing devices is actually advanced to the point where, you know, some of these things make cost, you know, uh, make sense from a cost benefit point of view. Yeah. And I guess, you know, without, we wouldn't have these advances in technology without also having a growing online marketplace. You know, also it's, true. it's all advances in technology. <laughs> very true. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. This was been, has been enlightening and informing. <laughs> there is so much more to IoT retail than those doorbells that, show you who is at your house and you can unlock your door for them. Thank you again for joining us, John. Really appreciate it. And thank you to all of you for watching Tech Talk. Be sure to subscribe to the Tech Talk YouTube channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, or if you think that IoT devices in retail stores could feel a little bit creepy. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll be here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday talking all things tech. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you later.